Hello, good morning. Uh, welcome again to this recorded lecture. Uh, today we are discussing about the consequences of social media. Uh, it has two articles. Number one is six reasons why social media is a boomer, the observer. This is also the article and then written by Lanye Jason. And the other one is Facebook is Doomsday Machine and published in the Atlantic. It's a little longer article than the previous one. And La France is the author of this article. <clears throat> so um, um, without going to discuss much about the broader topic, like the social media as a whole, we are talking about somehow negative consequences of the social media because of the time factor and because of the focus of the articles on this side. And there are some key ideas on this and there are some uh, similar issues raised by both of the authors. And then we can compare and contrast on that. We can bring some of the new ideas they never discuss on these articles. Uh, and I will give you some space to think by your own so that um, we can brainstorm some of the ideas as well as we can link our observation, link our experience because we are the social media generation. So you, you have a lot of experience on this and you have so many positive or strength factors social media and weakness factor social media. And so we should be much more aware of what are the potential consequences of social media and how we can control that and how we can avoid being, uh, avoid from being trapped in the social media echo chamber. So this is the general idea. I'm very, in a, in a very brief, I try to go with uh, these articles here today. Just give me a moment to share the screen. Um, perfect. Without delay, I just start doing some of the, uh, these are my observation in relation to these two articles. Like we are losing our free will because of the social media and I try to develop one sketch here. Free will is somewhere there inside, very much covered and protected or uh, hindered by the outer atmosphere. So our free will and then targeted content from media, social media and other environment and uses autonomy is somewhere there. The content is there, content is trying to influence our thinking and engagement, we are trying to flow towards the way how the information is uh, coming in our feed. And then algorithm also is trying to measure our movements, our activities, our reactions. And then algorithm is trying to feed us similar kind of uh, information to us so that we gradually sideline towards the information we receive and we we develop our own per perception. So social media platforms manipulates users' behavior through algorithm number one. These algorithms are designed to maximize um, designed to maximize engagement often at the cost of users' autonomy, like I said, and users are certainly influenced by the targeted content, advertisement, and that lead us to lose our free will. I have created another a small a linear modality as well. Social media algorithm is there first and that maximizes our engagement and that learns from our activity and feeds information accordingly and targeted content and ads to us 
and we develop our auto, uh, lose our autonomy and develop our modified feeling and we lose our free will. Um, so quitting social media is very important and recommended by these two articles, more or less. So try to restrict ourselves. Um, but it is not easy though. It quitting social media, why there are some reasons, societal instability and amplifications of extremes because they amplify uh, quitting social media is the most finely targeted way to resist the ins insanity of our times. Social media contributes to social instability and insanity because they fuel very uh, hard hitting reactions rather than the soft and diplomatic. Platforms amplify extreme views and misinformation accelerating social divisions. They, they try to create that division and quitting social media can be a personal act of resistance against these negative trends, against the algorithmic modifications of our free will. Uh, social media, um, you, you can definitely remember there are so many movements like of Arab Spring during the 2012, 13, 14, around that time. And several different countries, they, they were they revolted against the existing regime. And this revolt was possible because of the social media networking. Yes, until that, it is true. But once the result, a revolt was successful, this country could not transition towards peace and stability again. And most of them in a chaotic situation, for example, Libya and Sudan, and even Egypt, democracy is gone. So social media is a, a power, a force, a network power, but it is not producing the result as expected. So remember that way. Uh, and then these authors and some of the other authors, they are a little more critical on the social media's outcome. Online interaction of a lack of nuance and empathy of face-to-face -face communication, number one. Uh, social media also encourages hostile and aggressive behaviors. Yeah, we often encounter this kind of idea. Uh, a situation and the design of these platforms promote conflict and reduces meaningful discourse because social media is a kind of destructive rather than a platform that we can focus on discussing something. So social media distracts, bringing a lot of, introducing a lot of new kind of ideas. Uh, and social media undermining truth. That's true because there are so many conspiracy theories going on. Misinformation spreads rapidly on social media, often faster than um, other actual factual information. Algorithm prioritizes sensational content that can distort users' perceptions of reality. And based on these two activities, this undermines the public trust in institutions and factual reporting. I have created one graphic here, misinformation on social media, sensational content and prioritization. This is a huge feeding, distorted perception, erosion of trust. And then we can be a person without having a specific clear idea, clear mind, because there are so many conspiracy theory and misinformation that are playing on in our mind and they have already contributed modifying our thinking. And we cannot be as firm and confident as we were before exposed to social media fraud. Um, another, uh, another common issue discussed by the authors, these authors and other authors is social media make our voice somehow meaningless. 
because there are so many other people come and react and argue and counter argue and they divert the, the major agenda. The constant stream of content undermines the individual expression. Somebody spoke on something, the original content, the originality, the, the real argument, that can be distorted. Meaningful communication is drowned by several posts and updates and that are engaged with a lot of conspiracy theories. And users' contributions become part of the noisy, overwhelming digital landscape. So devaluation of expression, expression were undermined, and people are flooded in a lot many communication, and the landscape is magical and it's overwhelming and you may be flooded with other information. And so your real argument might be influenced and changed something. And that the authors, they, there, some of them are calling this is the boomer's machine. I will talk what is boomer machine later on. And social media destroys our capacity for to be empathetic to others. Uh, one of the authors of this, these two articles, uh, Jaron Lanier, who wrote Six Reasons Why Social Media is a Boomer. She argued that social media, as it currently exists, has profound negative effects on individuals and society. The design of social media platform encourages superficial interaction Users are less likely to engage deeply with others' experience and emotion. Consequently, that leads us to a decline in empathy and understanding of among users. So platform designs, users' engagement, and empathetic decline. So I created one graphic picture here um, to assess the impact of social media. This, uh, how social media platforms operate and their impact on users, mostly when we assess in a, in a bulk, mostly is a more negative. So there are several issues discussed on social media, especially on the negative consequences, but one major issue is missed. So I'm just trying to show you this three minutes video and then we'll continue our talk, okay? This is all about what's social media on mental health because none of these two articles talk about that. I'm just bringing this from um, a YouTube new channel. Here you can see the new channel. Social media seems we just can't get enough of it. According to Nielsen, last year, Americans streamed 21 million years worth of video. That's up 21% from the previous year, and that can lead to overstimulation. Joining us this morning to discuss is Dr. Nicole Andrioli, a PhD with Pathways Psychological Services. Good morning. So good, good morning. to see you. And not only are people scrolling, but now they're switching back and forth from different apps. I mean, what is getting us so caught up in this? and that need for constant stimulation. So there's a couple of reasons. One, it's habit forming. So we get into these habits where when we're bored, when we're idle, sometimes when we're anxious, we're reaching to do the same things over and over again to fill that need. So that's one of the reasons. A big one is the dopamine release that we experience when we're constantly scrolling and seeking out new, interesting, and exciting information. The release of dopamine in the brain is reinforcing. So we're constantly seeking that out. So if we're going through our social media feed and we're experiencing the dopamine release, but then all of a sudden, you know, I've been on this app for a little while. It's starting to get a little mundane, a little boring. Let me switch over to this other app so that I can find something new and exciting to look at. And it seems all of this scrolling is kind of changing people's view of themselves and the world too. Absolutely. There's a huge connection between social media use and overuse and how we feel about ourselves from a mental health perspective. There's research that shows that it's connected to anxiety, depression, loneliness, social isolation. If you think about the things that you're look at, looking at, these really curated, over-edited versions of people's lives, it's creating anxiety in us if we feel as though we're not keeping up with their expectations and their achievements. It can cause body image issues. We can also 
be really overwhelmed with the wealth of information that we're receiving, not being able to really discern what is considered misinformation or fake news. And let's not forget the influence that the algorithm plays. It's constantly feeding us content that's very al aligned with what it thinks our beliefs are. Mm. So now we're receiving very limited information. We're not getting exposure to diverse information and it's keeping things very polarized. So you have some tips to help us manage that screen time. The first is focus time. What is that? So think about focus time as setting up very specific carved out time where I'm going to focus on this task that needs to be done. So I'm going to eliminate distractions and distractions can be everything from clutter to notifications on your phone or your laptop to noise in the background. It's really important to um, focus on not multitasking, but single tasking, which is something that most of us aren't very good at anymore. And you also say you need to focus some time on silence. Tell me about reflection, this part of the tips. Reflection plays a big role. It's really hard to be aware of our behavior and change behavior if we're not aware of what the behavior is. So the reflection piece of it is really understanding what are our social media habits? When are we reaching for our phones? Is it because we're bored? Is it because we're procrastinating? How long are we staying on social media? And the really important piece is how is it making us feel? How is it affecting us? So being able to really sit in silence and reflect and be really honest with yourself is really important to that. Well, Dr. Nicole Andrelli, it's good to see you. Thank you so Thank much. You so All right. So we just watched a, a small video about the mental health because of the social media, because this mental health part is not discussed much in these two articles. So I'm just bringing this new perspective here to help you think about social media is not just negative for politics, negative for economics, ne negative for some revolution, social other social movements, but negative for our own health as well. So the more we spend our screen time, the more we uh, try to scroll the type of content that we are willing to read more, that is align us in a certain directions and make, making an impact in, in mental health. And we already discussed about the intellectual growth as well. So because when it hampers our uh, development of free will, free thinking, then definitely this intellectual growth is affected. Now here we are talking about these two articles one by another, and then we compare and then we have some questions, then we're done. So Facebook is a doomsday machine. Uh, this is a little longer article by Andriana Lockburns, and this was published in The Atlantic. Uh, it was not fully accessible to those who are not subscribing the Atlantic. So I subscribed the Atlantic. I downloaded the article, but um, it is not easy to cancel the subscription because there was no um, the trial um, trial period. So I tried to cancel it. I talked to, I already sent them email to cancel it because I subscribed it by mistake. And even I uh, lost a complaint in my PayPal account that I just wanted to cancel it, but it's not canceling something. So I just tried to uh, bring my money back, but I don't know, it's 95 US dollar is gone or is coming, I don't know. But anyway, I downloaded the article for you and it's already in bright space. Go to the week content, week number eight, and you will see those articles. So. If the link not working, don't worry for that. So, and both of these articles, uh, this article, this particular article, Facebook is a doomsday machine. Uh, the article explores how Facebook's algorithm and business model contribute to social harm. And it draws parallel between Facebook and a theoretical doomsday machine designed to cause destruction. So both of the articles more or less in negative light and they criticize more instead of talking, uh, instead of making any advocacy about the strength factor of social media. So you can see here, um, this is not the doomsday machine. Doomsday machine is uh, a mythical uh, instrument, a mythical thinking character, 
equipment, whatever you say. So the doomsday machine is something like the atomic bomb, some that can damage every life on this earth and even in the universe. So, uh, or you can say the doomsday machine is a device designed to auto autonomously initiate a nuclear war without human intervention, resulting in destruction. So this idea is taken from Herman Kahn's Cold War theory. So when they were talking about the doomsday machine, so when Russian bloc and the American bloc, they were trying to do, trying to wage a bigger war with the nuclear weapons. Maybe, maybe the third world war is more destructive than the second one. And Facebook is compared with the doomsday machine because of its algorithm and its autonomous systems that is feeding us and killing in a very slow and silent way, key intellectual death, or, or even our mental health or other, other kind of health issues. So algorithm acts autonomously, amplifying harmful content without ethical consideration, number one. Facebook's scale, meaning this is the one of the, I think the largest social media platform network across the world. Around 3 billion people are connected to Facebook. So this is a huge machine in this sense. And this leads to unintended, unintentional, but widespread social harm. And both uh, the doomsday machine and Facebook operate without human control. Algorithm is working, driven by destructive momentum. Many social media is destructing our intellectual and our mental and growth. Doomsday machine is a destructive equipment. It destroys everything. It's all imaginary or mythical tools. Here you can see um, a boomer. It's like a boomer. So boomer is, is the term used in both articles. Boomer uh, is somehow a negative or unpleasant expression, so something unpleasant. So if you have to express something unpleasant, you can use boomer. But here the author tries to develop an acronym a full, full, full form of this boomer here, like behaviors of users modified and made into the empire for rent. I mean, like social media, they are using us for their benefit, something like that. So this is an unpleasant anyway. Um, an autonomous operation and they perpetuate harm and they focused us more an engagement rather than our safety, those who are using. So we are the product for them that is autonomously operating and that is perpetuating harm rather than more harm than good. That's it. Um, so uh, when the idea of this boomer, uh, the um, doomsday machine, once I read the article and then I wanted to create some kind of doomsday machine and I put the prompt of the, the title of the article, Facebook is the doomsday machine, full step. The architecture of the modern web poses grave threats to humanity. It's not too late to save ourselves. So this is the title and subtitle of the article. And this, uh, uh, the, the Facebook is doomsday machine by La France. And I just put this prompt into Microsoft Copilot to see what kind of doomsday machine it can generate for me. And it is here, you can see Facebook and other social media also there. And I don't know how this doomsday machine is affecting us, but anyway, one, one concrete picture is here for us. Like the doomsday machine, Facebook system operates autonomously, driven by algorithms focusing users' engagement. It perpetuates harm that we showed in the previous graph and without human control. So it is autonomously working. And the design of this machine, either doomsday machine or Facebook, prioritize engagement or social well-being. Uh, here, I'm just trying to show you the pros and cons of Facebook's societal impact. 
and mostly th these are the negative. Pros are connectivity, information sharing, business opportunities. Cons are amplifies extremism, spreads disinformation, increases polarization, and it develops harmful system and erodes stress. And there are several examples in relation to these in this particular article. So here, some of the points here are I jotted down, Facebook's influence on society and its comparison to a doomsday machine, concerns over the role of social media, amplifying extremism and disinformation and polarization. And it's Facebook shifts uh, shift from a communication tool to a harmful self-perpetuating system. It's no more uh, media, it's something corporate stuff that uses us to make money. Uh, and Facebook business model, here Facebook prioritizes engagement or, uh, over uh, engagement to generate revenue. So the more we are engaged, we see, we watch, and then the revenue is generated. Algorithms simplify sensational and decisive content. So instead of unity, it creates divisions and user data is exploited to uh, target ad companies so that our information is sold, our privacy are violated. And there are hundreds of examples like this are happening. So data exploitation here, you can see data collection analysis and based on that target is provided, privacy are compromised, ethical questions are ignored, and English engagements and prioritization. So more engagement and the our, our profile is, provided with lot many f information in our feed. So, and so we are also flooded instead of having a firm uh, concept and argument, we are also flooded with social media information. Uh, and here the echo chamber, we, we have been talking a lot about the social media is producing an echo chamber. It, social media, not just Facebook, they reinforce pre-existing beliefs by exposing users uh, to similar viewpoints. And then they, they contribute to social fragmentations and reduces exposure to diverse perspectives. So whenever we dislike somebody's viewpoint, we either block them or unfollow them or unfriend them so that we're just trying to uh, create a a chamber of like-minded people. And those who appreciate my voice and maybe I also appreciate their voice because so like-minded And the Facebook algorithms create echo chamber, reinforces users' existing beliefs and increases social dividends. Here, you can see Facebook and similar viewpoints are exposed, reinforces existing beliefs and social fragmentation, and the same cycle is running. This is echo chamber. And you can see another, uh, the textual figure as well, Facebook algorithm, so how it is, it is developed in the same, same time. Here you can see social impact, societal impact. Facebook, spread of misinformation, polarization, erosion of trust. Within misinformation, public, confusion and mistrust, reinforcement of existing belief, increased social division. So these are the points. Facebook allows rapid dissemination of false information contributing to social confusion. And tools like reactions buttons encourage users to interact with content that provokes strong emotion. Group likes QAHAN, I don't know how, Q-A-N-O-N, QAHAN, maybe. And the conspiracy theorists are very much popular and they thrive on Facebook platform. Algorithms and scale amplify fringe movements, making them appear more mainstream. And erosion of trust and undermining the trust in institution and the media. So consequence of to a consequence for the democracy because of the social media platform and being used and exploited in a different way. So it can create a kind of threat to the democracy. It can undermine trust on the democratic system and it can interfere in the election and other democratic process. Um, 
potential solutions what we can do to bring the social media back on track, especially either Facebook or other social media. So the author, the author of this article calls for the greater transparency in Facebook's algorithm, number one, uh, and also asks for the regulatory frameworks to curb Facebook influence, number two. Uh, and the author also advocates for the promotion of digital literacy by encouraging critical media consumption and awareness of online disinformation and also asks for the human intervention, like Facebook has the power to curb harmful content, but often chooses not to do that for the appropriate reasons. For that reason, stricter regulation, greater transparency, and widespread digital literacy awareness campaign. So these are the potential solutions of these problems that we discussed and consequences. And to conclude this first article, like a mythical doomsday machine, Facebook current model poses a significant threat to society because of the profit-making algorithm and urgent action is needed. And it's not a media company because it's not accountable to public. And the author calls for a re-evaluation re of, oh, re-evaluation. So yes, it would be another E, but it is not okay. Re-evaluation of how social media platforms should operate, refer and regulate. These two are both go simultaneously. Uh, article two, the, uh, the next article, six reasons why social media is a boomer. So the author, Jaron Lanier, who wrote this article in Guardian is quite shorter than the previous one. She's a tech pioneer, she outlined six major reasons why social media has negative impacts on individuals and society. The article is a critic of the current social media landscape and it's undermining business model. So boomer machine. Uh, I already explained the, the so-called full form of this acronym. Attention acquisition. So the, the, the six reasons we are discussing here attention seeking platform number one an invasive presence mean invasion of privacy and personal information content overload flooding of the information of similar kind sneaky control and trying to manipulate through information control monetizing from our activities and creating a fake society by fake information so this article is taken from, this is a rework from, remake from the book, 10 Arguments for Deleting Your Social Media Accounts Right Now. Jaron Lanier, she wrote this book, and this article is a kind of uh, re reworked versions of the same book. Uh, attention acquisition, social media platform, so reward attention leading to negative behavior and people often become aggressive online to gain attention. Everybody is an attention seeker. The behavior fuels the platform engagement driven business model. The more people engage, the more people watch, the more people can react, share, provided comments on that, the more people can make money. So negative behaviors, attention-seeking behavior, engagement models. Uh, butting into everyone's lives, so extensive surveillance. This is the invasion of privacy. Uh, extensive surveillance through personal de devices, data on communication interest, movements, and more data is collected. So algorithms use this data to create predictive models of users' behaviors. So data collection, surveillance, predictive algorithms. So surveillance through the devices that we use and data is collected and algorithm is fit by the media company, social media company, and then that can feed this interesting content that we are, are looking for. Uh, cramming content down your throat. 
Algorithm personalized content to modify your behavior. Different users see different content based on their data, the way they use it. Personalized become personalized and becomes problematic when combined with other manipulative components. So manipulative component, data collection, predictive modeling, content personalization, use user behavior modification and manipulative component. Again, this is a cycle. So directing behavior indirectly, meaning algorithms are influencing us towards certain direction, to like somebody's product, to dislike something, to change our behavior. Customized feeds are optimized to engage users with emotionally potent cues. Users are often unaware of how they're being manipulated. The goal is to keep users glued to the platform, completely engaged to the platform and influence their behavior. So earning money from this could machine. The more you are engaged, the more you can earn money. The behavior modification machine is rented out for a profit and to influence users' behavior. And this is a rise in manipulative practices and cognitive blackmail. So here, bumper enterprises. So I just try to create this, this uh, skates here, revenue generation, cognitive blackmail, impact of burns, impact on journalism. Finally, the social media driven journalism is a, um, they, they have clickbait stories, meaning people want to click there, but there's nothing, nothing serious, just interesting to click it. And detachable from the context, meaning no serious reporting there. It's just the high sounding, a kind of yellow journalism. Uh, fake mobs and faker society, social media as it currently exists, has profound negative effects on individuals and society. And Lanier, the author of this article, advocates for quitting social media to reclaim personal autonomy and improve societal well-being. The article calls for a re-evaluation of social media business models to prioritize ethical practices, but it's not happening here. Um, in this section, we're talking about the, some some similarities of these two articles and some differences. Similarities first. Both of the articles focus more on the manipulative user's behavior, how social media is trying to focus on that. They highlight how social media platform manipulate user's behavior and engagement-driven platforms amplify disinformation, emotional manipulation. So La France article talks more about this and how users' behavior are modified in real time to serve advertisers and operate interest. If this is Lanius article. So uh, should users continue using social media platform? This, this question is for you. You can have the option to say continue. Users can stay connected, share, and access information for their better social goal. <laughs> At this it quit. Users can avoid manipulation and private privacy. Maybe you can have the reasons here. So you can think of this question. Expand your thinking. Should users continue using social media platform? Why? Why not? Um, exploitation of users' attention. So both articles focus on article criticize the exploitations of users' attention and because they are making money because of that. Facebook's architecture promotes, I mean algorithm, promotes attention-seeking behaviors and thrives on controversial content, I mean conspiracy theories, misinformation, disinformation. And the other article, the, uh, the social media focused article, platforms reward negative behavior as it garners the most attention, reinforcing harmful engagement. Here I developed one Sketch, user attention exploitation, negative impact on individual, negative impact on society, individual and society, calls for greater awareness, changes in users' engagement. Uh, erosion of social trust. So both article underscore how social media damage social, societal cohesion and trust, degrade discourses, fosters misinformation, damages cohesion, 
and disrupt interactions. And Facebook impact and social media impact are the same, much different. So these are the major similarities out of these two organs. And, and the differences are here. Tech determinism versus business model. The first article by La France. La France article. La France articles mean Facebook is a doomsday machine. Focus more on technological determinism that we discussed already from the first class. Users have little agency due to Facebook's design. So because Facebook's algorithm is more decisive than an individual user. This is the major message of this article. The other article, Lanier's article, six reasons of social media. So she says harmful effects stem from the advertising driven models of social media. So we have to redefine, reform that. And we have to, and the agencies public, this would have access to algorithm to modify algorithm. Not easy, but this is the argument. Another uh, difference is response to the threats. So how these two articles differently respond to the, the threat from social media. And the first article by uh, the Facebook is a doomsday machine. La France. La France perspective emphasizes the need for drastic measures to mitigate the risk posed by Facebook akin to nuclear disarmament. And Lanier's article focuses on individuals and collective agency. Her perspective encourages individuals and society to take proactive steps to protect their data and resist behavior manipulation. And the third, response to negative impact how to respond to the negative impacts of social media. Um, embrace social media change. Because social media is not that much dangerous like the, so many weapons or disease or whatever. Social media depends on how you want to use it. Social media itself is not, not negative. So this is a middle path right now that I'm also in the same middle path, and many of you are also in the same middle path. It's not extreme. So embrace systematic change, control, and develop some regulation, develop some ethical guidelines, and, and create a situation where social media corporations can be accountable to the public. Something there. Support large-scale reforms to address social media's issue. So, this is the middle path. This is more ideal path, and many of us are aligned with this. But there is another, delete accounts. Take personal actions by deleting social media accounts. It's a little extreme, but this is also a valid argument. So how to respond? The challenges created by the social media. So these two articles have a little different view. So this is all about today's discussion. And here are some sample questions compared to each other, but it gives you a free thinking. How does the concept of user manipulation differ between the two articles, La France article and Lanius article, and what are its real world consequences today? Question. And then I'm giving more context here. La France argues that Facebook does not exist to seek truth, but to provoke a strong response. While Lanier claims that platforms are suitable for mass behavior modification. Considering both perspectives, how have you observed social media affecting public opinion and personal behaviors in your own experience? So this is for you, your personal observation in relation to these articles. Question number two, both authors discuss the role of attention as a common commodity on social media. How does this come competition for attention shape online behaviors today. La France states that Facebook has amplified this information to maximize engagement, while Lanier notes that the biggest asshole get the most attention. Reflect on how attention-driven design affect the quality of conversation on platforms like Facebook or Instagram. Number two. Number three, 
LaFrance compares Facebook as a doomsday machine, while Lanier uses the analogy to lead in pain to describe its danger, six reasons why social. Which metaphor do you find more relevant for understanding social media's impact today and why? Consider recent social movements or political events shaped by social media. How do these metaphors help explain the influence of platforms and civic life, public discourse, or personal well-being? So these are the three questions, sample questions for you for the discussion, for thinking, maybe for the midterm exam too. Um, and read the real articles that I provided, uh, uploaded on the Bright Space, and I will upload this um, the presentation as well, and you will receive uh, this, this recorded lecture as well by tomorrow. So thank you so much for watching this very carefully, and keep watching once or twice and read the presentations and be ready for the examination. So this section, Consequences of Social Media, even though some of the contents are already discussed in different weeks, in different articles, but similar, but a little more negative and more critical discussions are here today. So I think uh, today's discussion is really interesting and it is much more critical. And this, these, these are the some of the key messages from different articles we discussed in previous weeks. Okay, thank you so much. Have a wonderful uh, day and see you on Thursday. And, and you are, good luck for your midterm exam. Thank you.